we knew it was going to be that way. Coach Rolovich has done a great job. He's the right guy for the University of Hawaii. They're playing with the hard edge. They had a bye week, and uh, some of our uh, more seasoned fans remember some of the tough games that we've had with Hawaii, and that proved to be the case. Uh, we're certainly excited about the win. The conference win is uh, always important. It was a heck of a ball game. Uh, we did get beat up. I imagine they did as well, and that's typical of that type of game as well. Some of the status of the guys will be determined as the week goes along. But we're certainly pleased with the win. And uh, a conference win is always important. On to our next opponent, uh, Texas State. Uh, you know, we've had a home and home uh, series with Texas State. Uh, they'll come in to Laramie, and we got to be ready to play. Uh, a very talented quarterback, a, a graduate uh, transfer from Mississippi State. He was heavily recruited and played in the SEC. Williams is a, uh, an excellent passer. He's a very athletic guy. Uh, they've got a host of running backs, uh, some receivers. They spread the ball around. And there's a guy that's not a starter, but we think is an excellent player, um, Moberly. Uh, they operate out of a 3 4. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, that'll be another challenge for us to get ready to go this week. Uh, we're excited about being at home. It'll be an afternoon game, different platform it'll be shown on. We're excited about that. And so at this time, I'll open it up to any questions anybody might have. I know you mentioned that, you know, injuries will be determined as the week goes on. Is it kind of somewhat encouraging with guys like Caden or Marcus or even Kevin Prosser that there's chances you might mm -hmm. get them back? Because it sounded like it was a little not as optimistic after the Hawaii game Saturday night. Well, we'll find out more today, Robert. Uh, what was encouraging is, uh, you know, James Price came back and really played well. That was his first uh, you know, opportunity for some live contact. So we're encouraged about that. Uh, we'll find out a little bit more on the status of each one of those guys. You know, for me to say something right now, I, I think it would be a little bit premature. You'll find out a little bit more uh, probably tomorrow. But, but James, you know, obviously he caught the winning touchdown. So mm -hmm. is he still in good shape of, of getting, you know, getting more reps and getting back in there? Yeah, he's so. going to be inserted as a starter this week. So there'll be even more repetition than normal there. Coach, after a couple games where the defense was on the field a whole lot, mm -hmm. uh, I guess just how much of that is, you know, facing pretty tough offenses and how much is, you know, maybe needing to get some more third down stops and things like that? Well, there's there's a give and take uh, within the flow of a football game. You know, uh, possessions come about. Certainly any time that you score on a kickoff return, that has an impact. And uh, But uh, Hawaii did a nice job, and we had them backed up a couple times, third down and long. Their quarterback uh, really did a nice job making some plays. Uh, certainly we can play better. Uh, and then... You know, I think uh, we need to establish more drives on offense, and we're going to clean some things up this week. Uh, you know, I, I think our guys are going out there working hard in practice uh, to stay on the field a little bit more offensively is going to even that balance out. Uh, you know, we're certainly get a lot of repetition on defense, and, you know, we gave up a lot of yards. Uh, the positive thing was we got the two turnovers, and then we kept points off the board for the most part. I know you mentioned after the game, you know, about the drop passes, especially early, that you would it would be addressed and addressed rather swiftly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you probably dealt with a lot of these types of things as a coach. And is, you know, is it just working on the fundamentals? Mm -hmm. Do you really, you know, harp on the guys about it? I mean, how do you kind of approach it while keeping their kind mm -hmm. of their psyche up, so to speak? Well, I, well, I think uh, you know the easy approach is to 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 get upset and tell a guy to catch the ball. That's great coaching, catch the ball. Um, you know, we're looking at adjusting the depth chart, <clears throat> which guys are going to be out there. Uh, I think putting these guys in position to where, um, you know, they, they, they can uh, reestablish some confidence. And, um, you know, it was frustrating. It was frustrating, I know, for those players. You know, they're not out there trying to drop passes. But nonetheless, this is a production deal and you've got to produce. And so we're excited, like I said, to have James back. And, you know, he caught a big, big pass uh, that was thrown really well by Josh. I know Coach Dicker kind of was hoping to work in three safeties this year rather mm -hmm. than always just having Marcus and Dewey. But I guess what have you seen from Elijah so mm -hmm. far this year, how he's come along there? Well, he's progressed each week. And each week, you know, the game plan changes. And for a younger guy, uh, that can be a challenge. But it's been good. Uh, Elijah's an excellent tackler. He's around the ball a lot. Uh, he's playing uh, meaningful reps and meaningful times of the game, and so we're encouraged about that. You talked about the Mississippi State quarterback who mm -hmm. started at Mississippi State. Does he compare favorably or 
kind of, or is he more unique of other maybe kind of dual threat guys that you've either seen this season or even in past seasons? Well, it'd be in the past, and uh, to throw a name out there might be a little bit slighted. I, he's he's really an excellent player. He was heavily recruited. I think he's a five-star guy out of uh, Louisiana, um, and and played uh, pretty successfully in the game. So. You know, to say, quote, dual threat, I think it minimizes uh, sometimes people's thoughts on his ability to throw. He's got a quick release. He's got a strong arm. He's the defensive player of the week and by the Mountain West. Oh. Are you looking for him to do anything special against Texas? Well, um, he's got to continue to, to be a force out there tackling, and, and that's predetermined. It's not like you've got a safety that's – uh, deep in the backfield and making tackles because your your run defense is so porous. Uh, Andrew's been uh, inserted um, close to the line of scrimmage. A lot of times he's up there, you know, making tackles at one yard and uh, certainly made a great interception. And he'll continue to, to, to play well. Andrew plays with a hard edge. And he has high expectations of himself and this defense. You know, I think Jason went in there when Caden went down on Saturday. It looked like Cole's behind. Caden on the depth chart, is, it, is that kind of up in the air this week as well in terms of who's mm -hmm. um, maybe would step in for Caden there? Or? Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look. We'll know more, like I said, tomorrow morning. Um, I, I do think it looks promising to have Ryan Cummings back, uh, and we'll find out a little bit more about Ryan Cummings as, as well. Craig, with, with Trey moving over to the offense, that's two guys in the last four years you've done that with mm -hmm. Ryan Hill too. Is that common in your in your – History is that common to move players from mm -hmm. offense to defense, or is that pretty rare? I, I I don't think we did that with Brian. Now, Brian was a linebacker in high school, but he okay. started out as a running back. Uh, Trey started out as a running back, and then we, you know, began to look at what skill set he has during the course of camp and then during fall. Um, you know, particularly with freshmen, sometimes you do that quite a bit, and uh, we have done that. The, the things that we liked about Trey. Um, his size, uh, he covers ground in a different manner than maybe some of the other guys that we have. And, uh, you know, at that size, <clears throat> then he's shown some um, power running and then his speed. Uh, you know, I think the future really looks bright for that guy because, you know, if you look at his weight right now, I think he's about 209 pounds. He's awfully lean. And you're looking at a six foot three, 230 pound guy as we go. And, and those are the typical prototype guys that we like at our tailback spot. When you have such a tall back like that, is there a balance between you know him being a physical runner and him you know getting his pad level mm -hmm. down and not running too straight up? Sometimes? Well, pad pad level is always uh, important, particularly when you're a t taller guy. But uh, that leverage does make a difference, and uh, we'll continue to work on that. But I think he's running, you know, he's running with uh, not only good uh, intensity, but I think his body lean's pretty good. What have you seen, Coach, out of your tight ends? Just, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you had a great one with Hollister last year. What have you seen out of Tyree, Josh, mm -hmm. in terms of their development and kind of connecting a little bit even more with Josh in the past mm -hmm. game? Well, they're emerging, you know, certainly. And I think Jake caught a couple passes this last Sunday as well. We're always championing those guys. Um, <clears throat> Tyree's coming around. Uh, Josh Harshman's very, been very capable. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're pleased with those guys. And you saw them make some big plays uh, in, in Saturday night's game. I guess with the bye week coming up, how important is it just to go into mm -hmm. that with a win the same way mm -hmm. that you guys did last season? Well, I'm going to give you the, the accurate coach's response. That's the next week after that. We're looking at Texas State really hard. They're a capable opponent. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're excited that we're going to be at home. We're excited about playing an afternoon game. Um, and so that's what we're focused on. No disrespect on your question. Just don't ask it again. <laughs> <laughs> OK, with that amount of laughter, I think that's about time to end the press conference. OK, well spoken, well said. All right, guys, thank you so much.